Hi. This is a little bit of a different format. Hello. Hello. Thank you all for joining. This is going to be a bit of a just chatting stream, sort of a let's hang out. Um, help Sid do world building that they should have done forever ago. Um, <laughs> sort of, it's what? I definitely did all my work beforehand and didn't have any world building scattered across my world. Totally. Totally. Um, so, hi, I'm Sid. I'm not your humble dungeon master for the day, but I am here. There's a noise, um, that I heard. And this is, this below. I, I am a Danny. I exist. I'm vibing. It's a vibe time. Uh, this Today's is just a vibe. Today is just a vibe. It's going to be a little bit loose with the rules here, since we're kind of just going over, you know, the Does world of Andoria. Does that mean I can say the fuck word? Oh, <gasps> you said it. I can't believe you said that. Can you oh, believe that Danny said that? <laughs> Insane. But all right. Wild. Wild. So... Oh. No rules. Absolutely none. <laughs> um, they left the two loosey-goosey silly people alone. Honestly, yeah. mistakes were made. <laughs> mistakes were made. The, it's the two chaotic ones that can go on rambles about random shit for like 40 minutes at a time. Listen, I'm going to try and keep it together, but I make actively no promises. So you're not going to talk about Marvel? Listen, I don't want to... Listen, maybe... <laughs> I... <laughs> Have a lot of thoughts about a lot of things. And but I today we're going to be thinking about... Wait, which way do I have to... Andoria. Andoria, yes. <laughs> um, so Andoria, if you are new here, which I highly doubt, um, is my custom setting, my world that I've created. As you can see, there's a little description oh, I wrote, I think, forever ago. Oh god, it was so long ago. I wrote this description about my world, and it feels inaccurate now. Um, but Andoria is a world that I created. It is a land, uh, as the description says, a land of myth and magic, might and bravery. It stands as a beacon of beauty and achievement. Blessed by the gods and made to flourish, the lands cater to the people that walk upon it. There are curious of effects i that's a miss that's a grammatical error uh there are curious effects to andoria a sense of magic permeating the land and pressing upon its inhabitants like a warm blanket or a tightening chain for some those who come to andoria often find themselves far too comfortable to leave listen rowan don't you dare start i can't i can't think about this right now i knew it i knew it i can't i knew rowan. it was gonna be don't you do y'all did him so fucking dirty the amazing spider-man was great and amazing y'all are late to the fucking game talking about andrew garfield's great he's been great the whole time y'all are late someone was like who's your favorite spider-man and i said unironically andrew garfield and they were like oh the only wrong choice and i was like no the only wrong choice here is fucking there is no wrong choice. They're all great. Stop shitting on Spider-Man. They're all amazing. They do a great job with different parts of it. No, Rowan, you fuck it. You, how dare you do this to me? I'm not gonna. I can't look at the chat anymore. I refuse. We can't look at chat. We can't look at chat. Apparently, I'm going to be tested today. Um, my. I'm just gonna be talking about Andoria. We cannot talk about Andrew Garfield. How y'all did him so fuck? Oh, suddenly, oh, the Amazing Spider-Man's good. It's always been good. Stop this. Just because he's like, oh, but he wasn't a nerd. Nerds don't exist in that capacity anymore. Stop it. Just because someone skateboards doesn't mean they're cool. So many boring people skateboard. I knew a lot of boring people who skateboarded. Y'all are, y'all are filthy. You did my boy dirty. Anywho, back to Andoria. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we now have, um... Gandrew Arfield in Andoria. Exactly. I gotta, I gotta write, um... I kind of want to make a tabaxi named Andrew Garfield. <laughs> An orange tabby tabaxi. <laughs> uh, new NPC. That better be a rogue. Exactly. Rogue. Um, this is so fucking stupid. <laughs> okay. There, so there wasn't a lot of planning. What did you say? Neutral good? Um, chaotic. Of chaotic. any capacity. Doesn't even have to be good. Just chaotic. Fair. Okay. This, listen, I'm Rowan, you've, 
you've disrupted me. I had careful planning in my head that's gone out the window. Because of Marvel. actually having planning for anything. Listen, um, are all of my notes for most games just um, sexy buff lady, question mark? Uh, and then I go, yeah, definitely. I was planning ahead of time. That's exactly how I plan. Okay, so Andoria is my custom location. Now, what you're seeing on screen is the world anvil for Andoria, which is where I try and keep all of my notes. I don't actually keep them all there. They're kind of loosely scattered in notebooks in PDFs in various places. But it is where I try and keep all of my notes. Sorry, I'm just looking at the map. Yes. So, the map has been updated since then, and I've yet to get to it. But, if you'll take a look, this is kind of the general idea of my world, of Andoria. It, this one is a old, very old map. It doesn't have, the, like, lines for each country and all of the things, so... But if you look down here, this is currently where the campaign in Doria is taking place. Down here, if I if, if, scroll, please. In the, no, no. In the country of Mbizi, which I believe does not have its own page just yet. Now, this is one of my, as you can, I'm sure guess, desert continent, which is also where a lot of my dwarves uh, and my serpent folk are from. There is a history that I am currently writing through of this area to make available to the players, which I'm sure actually Danny, your character, might have some knowledge of if they uh, paid attention in like history class in school, which I, that I doubt. Is under the assumption that they ever pay attention in class. They might, but that's only on good days when they're feeling like it. Fair. Now, um, this area, if I pull up the notes for it, which you'll note, the notes for this area are not in the World Anvil because they're in a loose, uh, PD, like a text file, and I don't know what it's called because my text files are called New Text, New Text 1, New Text 2. Oh my god. So it's just gonna be me, uh, for a brief moment, just looking through going, which of these? Which one could it even possibly be? I don't know. Nope. It's not this one. Let's try new text two. Oh, it's in the one called World Building Notes. I'm so smart. That that'll um, do it. I'm so um I'm a genius. Maybe. Actually. Oh, oh. Nope, I'm scrolling through this. This might not actually be it. Why is world building notes not about any of my world? Um, anywho, so the country of Mbizi, lovely place. It is, uh, so I have a couple of custom races as well as these sort of built in races that come with D&D 5e because as much as I love them, there are just some kind of limitations that I'm not really a fan of. I also, for obvious reasons, don't really like some of the world history that 5e kind of defaulted to it's um it's a little it's a little racist for no particular reason it didn't have to tiny be tiny bit just a tiny bit they just kind of oh wait bop, bop. did, did i uh, so let me pull up the page from bc and see if there are any notes here nope absolutely not the only note i have is that it's a technocracy on the world anvil unfortunately However, that is one of the key points of this country. So it is technically a technocracy, which is a government sort of built around who has the most technological might. Uh, so this sort of, this became the case when the dwarves took over the country. So it is, while native to the region are the serpent folk, the dwarves are sort of the ruling race slash class purely due to their more technological might. They spent a lot of time building up weapons of destruction, war. They were kind of one of the early founders of gunpowder and used that for obvious reasons too. So to fight, you'll also find most of your artificers there. Uh, what else? This is also where 
as seen in one of our episodes, I believe episode eight, seven or eight of Andoria. It is where the Temple of the Blood God exists, um, which we've already that had a very fun. fun time wandering through that lovely temple uh, and watching some people get their limbs ripped off of them. So that was great. Now, temple, there are many names for the Blood God. Many use different names in different locations. Some believe them to be a deity of chaos and destruction and horror. Others of medicine and health and cureness. It sort of depends on which person you're talking to and who they are and how they feel about this deity at this given time, depending on their culture. Um... The party encountered maybe one aspect of the blood god in that temple, and then later on encountered another aspect in a place known as the Oasis, which has no significance in any way um, mm -hmm. and doesn't mean anything. It ha its name is just a totally normal thing to have for a name. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's a totally normal place. Um, but, so, some of these places are still being built out. One of the most built out places I have right now is one of the northern nations, the place uh, that the characters, the players have not had a chance to go to, known as Fenfear. That is perhaps, I think, my most built out area, if I check that one out. Ooh, that's gonna be fun. Uh, so, you all have not had a chance to visit, purely because it is the northernmost nation in Andoria reaching what is known as the Onding, which is a sort of magical barrier at the North Pole, so to speak, between the mortal realm and the giant realm. It is the magical barrier that separates the two, and it is where a lot of the giants and titans came from, and how they sort of mingled with. As you can see, this is, I think, the only page I have fully built out. See the music on the page? That's cool. It's all clean and pretty. Uh, eventually they will all look like this, but for now, this is the only one. But, uh, the party right now is in Mbizi, which I believe is run by a pharaoh. Shoshan is his name. He is the current ruler of the country of Mbizi that the players are in right now. He has been in charge for about, I would say, 40 or so years. Maybe longer. And spends, he sort of rules with the Iron Fist. Right now he is on the back end of the technocracy. As much as he is the leader, it is very clear that there might be a new up-and-coming player uh, with the creation of Lifeway Industries who might be trying to take over the throne of Mbizi. Which is just like a fun little bit of political intrigue for you. Uh, I will say, anything, hmm. any questions you have about specifically where you're at right now? Or the world, I should say. We're currently in MBZ. The other place you've all visited is the city of Osin, which is where Lifswan took place. Mm -hmm. That was in um, one of the other countries, if I pull up the map again. No, no, it's Merwin. One of these centralized... It's actually right here. This cute little... Cute little castle. It is the capital of Merwin. And also one of the largest cities in the world. Well known for its... Transportation. It's sort of accommodation to... All races. One of the few cities that, like, has extensive underground tunnels for races that can't spend time in the light as well as districts for the undead like there are there's a large vampire population there's even a couple of liches who do live in osin although those are a bit more rare there is also a population of mole people who i believe i wrote the name of down but i will have to find who also live underground mole people. there are as in there's an entire race oh, of mole people i love that they're very sweet. Uh, but yes, yeah, so they also live underground. Um, Osin, I would say... Hmm, let me pull up, if see if I have any notes about this city. Hmm. 
Merwin? Oh, I do. I might. I'm just studying this map right now. Just staring at it, yes. So, this is the kingdom you were in for Lifswan, which... Lifswan, the school itself, is one of the oldest magical institutions in the world of just people going to school to learn magic. It was founded by, um, I don't believe I wrote it down, but there was specifically a wizard who wanted to have a school for everyone to learn various types of advanced magic that might not be easily available in the public. And so created a magical school, but as we all know, most people, once they start getting higher and higher in magical levels, start kind of just playing a little bit God. Where they're like, oh, I'm level 20 wizard. I can do whatever I want. Who could stop me? I'll cast Meteor Swarm. Also, I don't know what's going on, but you can. It keeps doing like a little green tent. But, since we did finish Lift Swan, I can give some notes as well as spoilers and close out plot lines of things that happened during the game that we just never had time to get to. Like, mm -hmm. what happened to your dragon friend? Mm. Which we just never had the chance to get to. But, sort of a spoiler, your dragon friend went in to go talk and kind of never came back. Yep. They were consumed by the headmistress, who none of you had the chance to meet, but would know is an elder brain. And became an elder brain dragon. Because the headmistress needed a living dragon, because she couldn't go out herself, obviously, and pick one up. She tasks, you know, the students with getting one. Oh boy. There were some other notes. Uh, let me see if I can pull them up. On things that just got skipped over. That we just never had time for. Uh, there was a professor you never had the chance to meet. Oh, that was, um... Because mm -hmm. I looked on your page about Lift Swan. Mm-hmm. Uh, who was it that you never had the chance to... Uh, Professor Callum Crane, yeah. who was actually just going to be sort of amalgamation of runic symbols uh, given life because they were a bit uh, made of wood and a uh, drop of actual starlight turned a living creature. You never had the chance to meet that professor. They were going to be your astronomy and astral projection and foreign language teacher. As well as also for some of the advanced courses, runes and magical theory. Uh, but they had like they had several sets of arms that moved on their own. They were made of plants and vines that sort of moved and elongated them as they needed to be. And you just we just didn't have a chance to get uh to meet them. Also, we didn't get a chance to meet, or, or at least a lot of time to meet. Um... Malos, did we? Uh, yes, that's also a teacher you didn't have a chance to meet. Uh, Professor Malos. Uh, Gesis Malos. She was a... So, some of these races are also pilfered over from Pathfinder, because Pathfinder does have some really interesting story stuff. Uh, she was part uh, human, part... Uh, I always mispronounce it, but uh, Quetzalcoatl. And just one of her parents was just a full Quetzalcoatl, and she was a teacher. She taught blade dancing, conjuration, and she was going to teach evocation and elemental magic. But also one of the teachers you just didn't have a chance to meet. She um, had very long hair with um, sort of feathers woven into it, and then underneath her dress you would be able to see her tails are sort of like spreading out, also covered in scales at most of her joints. Who else did you, did you not get a chance to meet? You didn't really... Sp uh, you spoke with Dr. Shore. Obviously, General Weimer. Everyone's least favorite professor. Dr. Weimer. Um, af you didn't spend a lot of time with Professor Wazette. I was so upset we didn't get to learn more about Paradise. Ah, uh, there it is. That's the other professor. Professor Paradise. You did... Uh, they were, I think, one of the few human teachers you had. <laughs> we just fucking scared them off. 
Uh, yes, yeah, so they left. They were currently dealing with a sort of magical ailment that they needed a cure for and decided they weren't going to wait until this carefully controlled substance that was being courted by the royal family was publicly released and, and stole it themselves. Um, or they could have taken a incredibly perilous journey all the way north past the Onding, which I mentioned was the barrier between the human and giant realm, and then try and find it in the giant realm. But that might have taken more time than simply stealing it from the royal family. And they sort of <sighs> left after they were, you know, caught and needed to make themselves scarce and get on the run. But they were, I, th I believe, the only human teacher you had. Yeah, uh, they were going to be your alchemy and arcane physics teacher, as well as the general mathematics. The every, Again, everyone's least favorite class is actual math, because that is a class you would have had to take. It's just regular math. Weimer had actual art attached to his page. Ah, yes, they all do. I imagine him as this crusty ass looking like you know the like public school PE teacher look. Oh yes. Uh so Weimer looks like a villain, I'll be honest. He looks like someone who's definitely a criminal. He long red hair, his most of his armor had skulls on it, and like the front of his armor was covered with like a, a giant demon skull, and the others his arms had hellhound skulls on them. He constantly wore full plate armor. It he looks like he like imagine someone who you look at them and you go you should you should be in jail. You look like an oath breaker paladin. Like he public school PE teacher. I mean that's valid interpretation. Just a crusty man who's like is in all of I'm um, imagine the full plate armor but gym shorts. <laughs> Still wearing the gym shorts. Gross. But yeah, so he definitely looked like someone who was just criminal. Like, uh, peak jail time. Uh, not someone you would want around your kids, at least. But he does look like someone who would probably be great at the front lines of perhaps a demon war, which is where he yeah. came from. So it's like, I get why he, I get why you look the way you do, but maybe not around children. But yeah, so uh, a couple of the professors that were at there... General Weimer, everyone's least favorite professor, uh, an actual war general who taught most of the like actual physical combat class, archery, battle tactics, martial combat, outrider training, a little bit of the rage courses mainly because even though he wasn't a barbarian, he seemed like the kind of guy who could just get f upset constantly. So he taught the rage courses. He was also the only other human professor you had. So the two humans you interacted with not great. Criminal and criminal. other criminal. <laughs> but, like, we, we applaud it because it was war like, crimes. One other, one of the criminals was good. Like, I will say Paradise whole thing. Like, uh, t don't steal. But also, I can understand you maybe weren't yeah. keen on waiting. The other professors you dealt with, Dr. Shore. She is also a war general, but in maybe a better way. <laughs> Uh, yeah. as she as she's an Asimar, which, technically speaking, Asimar don't... They do exist and they don't exist in my world. So Asimar are their own race, but they are also known as the... Uh, you can ascend to being an Asimar. Uh, because they are also known as a, a group slash race known as the Dalnice, who are native to Merwin. It was sort of... I had the idea, what if Manifest Destiny was just real? Where, um... Merwin, the country, was founded by a single family. So, imagine that the Mayflower got isekai'd to a fantasy world. <laughs> it's literally what happened. One of the... <laughs> 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 so, one of, my, of the, say, from our world, one of the was pilgrims, pilgrimage, went through a portal. And ended up in a magical world that they did not understand because what? where am I? What's happening? We've died. Or is heaven? Hell? Who knows? Um, unclear what's going on. And so they've been isekai'd. And then they are spoken to by an actual, or at least to them, what looks like an angel. 
a, a like glowing creature with wings and you know all of the the eyes in that who says i will help you build a nation here which to be fair the land they go in it's like rocky and obsidian and literally dying and one family gets picked to be the magical sort of royal the royal family the stars as they are known two a's because i'm super original um, and I definitely didn't just make something up off the top of my head. I definitely had an original thought and didn't make things up. <laughs> I'm just, I'm still reeling over that. What, the isekai, oh, uh, the Mayflower getting? the Mayflower got isekai. <laughs> I mean, like, imagine, it would make no sense. It would be the weirdest shit you'd ever, it'd be like, I, how does that, I literally, I and that was the thought I had, and then I went, okay, well now I have to make a whole thing based around this. I mean, listen, I told you this is all of my ideas for this series come to me in the middle of the night, like visions from an angry god. For the same reason, the nature god was me waking up in the middle of the night, going skeleton bees, and then going. Speaking th of visions, oh, in the past in Andoria, oh, we've had some visions, oh. From a, from a specific pumpkin. Oh. Regarding some very specific things happening. Who knows? I just kind of want a, a recap and kind of a focus on that point. Oh, some, and some possibly visions? possibly a fucking answer about my trash man. Who knows? I couldn't tell you. Listen, I just want to know if I'm going to be able to play my trash man if it ever comes to that point. Wait, which trash man? The one that used to be like greed. Ah, yes. Ah, so there were the some vision. Man. That's right. I forgot about that vision. So there are some things that might have happened in the past of Andoria that are neither here nor there. But I will tell you. So. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. So the, a little bit spoilers, because like I'm not, I can't give you spoilers, obviously, because we do need to get, we will still be having an episode of Endoria. But I will say that a lot of angelic or Asimar-like beings enjoy dabbling in, well, not all of them. Most of them are forbidden from dabbling in, in mortal affairs. However, there is one who has perhaps broken the rules a few times and needs to maybe clean up their mess that they made the first time they broke the rules and needs to and every time they try and clean it up by breaking more rules it might get worse and worse. Okay, but listen, it's fun to break rules. Exactly. It's super fun. Uh, and the consequences? That's future me's problem. I don't want no consequences. Um, consequences? That's for future greed. Uh, hi, it's future greed. Uh, consequences again. So. Mm -hmm. Now that's gonna go for fu further future greed. So, perhaps there is someone who is continuously dabbling in affairs that they shouldn't. Fucking dumbass, man. And every time they fuck it up, they keep going, well, f clearly I get fixed by dabbling further. Seriously, who needs to clean up their act in order to fix things? Uh, and it ends up being the same thing each time. <laughs> if you want more, then we're going to have to, you know, get into... And that's getting into Andoria spoilers. And that's actually, you know, getting back to Andoria. Mm -hmm. No, I can't get into spoilers about what's going to happen next. But I can say, you might you might see your, your trash man again. Trash man. He might make an appearance or two. In some locations where you would least expect him. Oh my god. He also might know some people that you would assume he wouldn't know. He's going to pop in to the, uh, through one of the fucking doors in his tent. Just, what's up? Bye. <laughs> I will say your trash man is in fact trash. And that's all I have to say. Hey. And uh, perhaps he needs to maybe stop doing the exact same thing and clean up his act to, you know, fix the issues that are ha ex being experienced. No. But 
that is some information about Trashy McTrasherson. Hey. Were there any other specific characters you want you wanted to know anything about? Um. Not that don't entail me being like, give me spoilers. I will if if I will dance around what I can and can't tell you. Nah, I don't really have any particular question. All right. I'm just sitting here like, yes, tell me everything. Yes. Now, there is. I love Andoria. There is a lot that goes on in this world. Uh, that I probably need to keep better track of. But, you know, that's whatever. So, one of the issues, at the very least, the country you did spend a good amount of time in for Lift Swan. Osin is the its capital, Lift Swan itself. The school is sort of built as a fortress where students can spend their time being safe there because there are so many, you know, magically inclined as well as now physically inclined students. There are just a lot of kids with access to insane powers. It's also one of the things we didn't get a chance to get into during the stream, but I did enjoy, is that there is an entire section for kids who are way too young to go to school, but are also incredibly powerful and can't be left alone. Oh, like the missing kid. Mm-hmm. Oh, so that was something that never got uh, concluded. Yeah. But the missing kid, so the twins... Uh, everyone's favorite twins were trying to get her to cast magic. Now, she cannot cast magic because, as one of the children with an obscene amount of it, she is actually currently housing uh, a demon lord in her soul. She's completely una unable to control that, but her magic can release portals to hell and can also genuinely hurt people. But she's too, she's too young to just be left to her parents to figure that out. So they have her here at a school where someone could close those portals or deal with the injuries or anything like that. But she's also, like, four years old. And you wouldn't just, like, scare that out of her. So there is an entire section of the school dedicated to keeping the very young children with magic safe. Just because they can't control and it. Is that child safe? Uh, she's safe. Like, physically, she is fine. Honestly, she won't. She unclear if she can get hurt. But she can't hurt those around her. Like, physically, fine. Mentally unclear how she's doing. I mean, she seems okay. But oh, if yeah, she but were like, to hurt someone. Did they end up finding her oh, after so, the twins kidnapped her? Oh, they immediately found her. The twins fully did... Th you know that thing where you just walk away with a child? Like... Yeah. You just held her she's she's way too young to know that you can't just go with anyone especially if they are kids who go to your school like it's not illegal to take someone out of their daycare so yeah they immediately found her made sure she didn't cast any spells didn't accidentally release that demonic part of herself did the which, twins get in trouble again uh yes they are currently suspended good from school fucking chaos children the tiny little chaos twins who are like a problem and a menace to everyone involved. They will grow up to become menaces to society. <laughs> Entirely true. Absolutely wild. They are on their way to being arcane trickster rogues. Oh my god. But yeah, so that's the twins, you which mean are. Tell me they're not already there. Uh, they haven't gotten, like, they don't have levels yet. But they're getting there. And then there are, of course, the other students, who I'm sure you remember. Burns, Lucian, who are having that very fun thing of tiny children who don't know what emotions are, dancing around each other. Going, I don't know how this, I just get jealous when you talk to other people. For no reason. There were some other uh, students you didn't get a chance to meet. Mabin, who lives in the fountain at the school. They are sort of just... Uh, so they're like sort of like a, a selkie. Like they literally just live in the water. I could have met a selkie. They are very fascinated with light and like various types of light shows. Because they are a night creature, they're very sweet. 
They would have been a year below you. Motherfucker, I'm so upset now. There were other students. Um, I'm sure you remember all of the mean girls. Uh, also, uh, wrapping some things up, Jason, who the sort of pious asshole you didn't... He did not graduate. He is the first student at Lifts One to never graduate and instead get removed from the school for uh-huh. disorderly conduct. Good. So he no longer goes to the school there. Uh, David Willow is having a much better connection with their sibling. Elwin, the sort of bard who enjoyed juggling swords and knives. They've both gotten a lot closer. David also has friends now who are like genuinely supportive yeah. of his magic and like his growth as a person. Hell yeah. Fern's doing really great. He continues with the whole like be true to yourself, self love thing. Um, let's see who was it. I still students? feel so bad. Um, he totally chill about it. Was just not a fan of getting. <laughs> you know the deal with warlocks and how sometimes mm-hmm. your body will do things without you. Yep. And he's just kind of like, I just hate it when my soul moves my body around without my knowledge. You know that awful thing that happens to warlocks. I don't regret that moment, but Eugene does. Mm -hmm. Honestly, incredibly, very clever. It was great. But yep, it's obviously there were the usual teenage dramas, you know, relationships, breakups, people getting mad at each other, la-di-da. Locking each other in uh, dimensional planes with a rope Mm -hmm. to hang out. Yep. Uh, Buckler might be having some issues on, like, maybe I don't just go with every pretty person who tells me they want to make out. Yeah. Sometimes they don't want to make out. Sometimes they want to trick you. Yeah, that's kind of how your soul could get stolen as well. Um, they did almost get tricked into a demonic marriage by another student. Because they're like, yeah, make outs? Oh, hold this rock for, like, 24 hours? Yeah, that's whatever. That has almost happened twice. So the school yeah. really needs to the crack down on this. The school really needs to crack down on demonic marriages. People gotta stop handing... No more rocks, I guess, at the school. You can't keep handing people rocks and saying, hold this, please. Oh my god. Because, uh, clearly, people just can't keep it together. So let's see. Those are some of the students you didn't get a chance to meet. You did, of course, get to at least visit most of the places on campus. Actually, let me see if I have a map of the school somewhere. I believe I do. Uh, So here we are sort of a full map of the school and just a chance you uh so there were some places you didn't get a chance to visit uh there was the where is it it is underneath this uh temple but there was the colorless chasm which is where a lot of the occult magics are done it's a bottomless pit where you can harness energy from the void itself there was a performing arts center where like all of the uh theater kids go Uh, Let's see. Hmm. There were the dorms, the arcane buildings, uh, jewelry, rune cutting, alchemy. There were the guard barracks all the way at the front of the school, as well as the combat hall and the coliseum back here, the airship docks, which you all briefly saw. Uh, My favorite is... Kind of ran into. Yes. The Abracapothecary, Abra like Abracadabra um, Apothecary. I don't know why. It's just a good name that I thought of. I was like, this is very fun. Um, but yeah, so these are some of the places that, in the school. Uh, as well as this is a map that I made, which I am very proud of. I made this myself with uh, Incarnate. 
but already. And then some other places, so let's see. Uh, Lift Swan is in the city of Osin, which is in the country of Merwin. Uh, commonly, outsiders just refer to it as the Human Kingdom because of its like a largest population of humans in one dense location, made of sprawling hills, farmland. It's also the largest exporter of agricultural goods. Currently, it is under the rule of uh, King Adonir Star. However, he rules from his sick bed and he grows weaker and weaker each day due to his age and illness. And his son stands to inherit the throne. Despite being the youngest child of said king, he will inherit the throne. His uh, suspiciously, all of his older siblings managed to disappear, and it's sort of unclear what happened to each of them. Uh, capital is the largest city, with the capital being nearly a country in its own right, with its sort of like sprawling metropolis, dense buildings, and homes filled with inhabitants. Uh, the capital itself is built into the mountain. And it is on what is known as the uh, Sinet Traders Pass, which is the sort of long, tra uh, think of it as the Silk Road, sort of a long trading road that c touches on three countries and their capitals between the main country, uh, Merwin, Fenfir, which I had mentioned earlier, and then the other, uh, I believe the name of it, I forget, was... Uh, ba, ba, ba. Oscana. So, Merwin, Oscana, and Finfear, those are the three countries it touches on. It is a traveler's road, sprawling from here all the way to here and back to here. Or, sorry. So, touching on these three points, you can get a lot of good trade going through just those three areas. Um, I sort of wanted to make this one of the countries with wild, uh, like very geography, so plains, but also hills, mountain ranges, deep caves and caverns, dense forests, but a very fun, uh, fertile soil and fresh water. It's home to many species of plants. It's also home to some of the largest natural disasters, just because other countries don't have them. Um, however, they refuse to use um, magical weather management because of its detriment towards crops. Instead of countries like Lahey, which magically control the weather, Merwin decided, nope, let's just let the weather go through, and we'll use that as the way to make sure our crops and farmland are well cared for. Let's see, what else? What other information about this? Uh, I haven't fully fleshed out its culture, so its art and history... But I do have the history of the land itself. It is a very, very old... The land itself is very old, so like even some historians don't know how hard, how far back it goes. Before the first settlers, there is my race of people known as the Justain, who are... So, native to my world are only the animal folk races. So, Tabaxi's, Leonin, all of those, those are the only native races. The rest come from various locations, or were crafted, or things like that. So, the Jastain are one of the first races of my land that are not animal-based. They are the first race to ever be non-animal-based, and live in this world. Uh, and they were also native to this land. So... Among them is was a wizard, which uh, you might notice the name of, Amorn, who someone might have wished to have all of their knowledge implanted in their head. Uh, so one of the first wizards, a powerful mage, whose spellcrafts are still used to this day. However, he craved knowledge and started delving into, you know, forbidden magics, countless necromancy and enchantment, sort of doing forbidden combined magics. And once those could no longer satisfy him, he started getting to like darker, more dangerous magic. Uh, and then there are parts of it that are just redacted that I unfortunately cannot share with you. Aww. He so was great. Spoilers. I mean, look at this. Look at it. It's, it's redacted. Granted by redacted. Gave life to redacted. However, Aww. 
He, this is where the creation of three separate races came from. The dwarves, halflings, and orcs were created by this wizard. Wow. Um, he made people... Uh, the sort of story goes that the dwarves are made of sta- sand and stone to be sturdy and uh, fettle. Clay and water to be strong under pressure but soften for orcs. And people made of dirt and grass to be low to the ground and tend to the earth as halflings. And those three races are said to be created by the wizard Amorn himself. But he attempt- his lust for power continued to grow and grow until he started becoming, like, his actions started becoming unspeakable and then redacted, of course. However, his, um, where was it? Someone attempted to stop him when his actions became too much, but few were able to stop his magic itself, and so there was a historical event that is not really well understood because of how old it is and how devastating it was, known as the Great Sundering, which we'll have more notes later. And as punishment, he was sort of ripped from time, and his memories and a lot of his work forgotten. And the land itself started becoming lush with new life and spreading new fertility so that it could regrow and recover from his his work, which is sort of the history of that land. And then Totally not starting to be a problem that someone else knows his forbidden knowledge from ages past. Totally not a problem. Not at all. Not even a little bit. Especially uh, not if it's in the mind of a, of a young student. I mean... Would you prefer the young student, or would you prefer Moriarty, knowing this? Fair enough. I mean, would you enjoy if Moriarty had this information in his head? Indefinitely. No qualms about using it. That man has... Some problems. Mm. Why, mm. Did, why did they let him be a teacher? Unclear. Maybe, perhaps this was just community service. My question is, why did the school bring him in on grounds of community service, knowing that he could very well poke someone into that true wish? Well, listen, they were, they were, listen, the headmistress wasn't thinking about it. She was a little busy with trying to get a dragon. Listen, I know you want a dragon, but consider the consequences of your own actions. Hmm. Sounds like future me is problem. God damn it. Why does what why does everyone in this world have that outlook? Of that's a problem for later. Mm-hmm. Oh no, it's later. Oh, it's later. Shit. Fuck. I didn't plan this th- I didn't think about this. Um and then so yeah. This country was um Merwin at least was settled in five hundred seventy nine. Uh, with just a couple of small factions sort of fighting each other over land and power. However, this conflict was put to an end with the creation of the Dull Nice, which I have mentioned before are... These sort of... Where is my mouse? It disappears constantly. These sort of angelic creatures that control, or have existed at least since the beginning of Merwin's creation. Most people call them a gift, but it's sort of unknown what they where they came from. They act as a protecting force for the people, protecting them from threats like too large on the outside. So a lot of wars were won simply by having the dull nice around saying, well, we have literal angels on our side. So at the end of the day, we could kind of win this fight. But they also defend against those abusing their power. So a lot of lords, ladies, and the royal family also are subject to the power of the dull nice saying, hey, you're not a good enough leader. Let's deal with you. Um, many describe them as angelic, but also sometimes as automatons. Or something that seems inhuman because of their precision. So, they perhaps might be creatures of law from a specific plane who kind of enforce the rules as they see fit. Um, but they are mostly known simply just to protect the people who live in Merwin. So as long as you're there, you're kind of under their protection. But 
First of them sort of brought the warring factions together under one ruler. They're like, hey, you're one nation now. Stop fighting. If you keep fighting, none of you get to live anymore. So, obviously people stopped fighting because it's either fight or get murdered. So let's stop fighting. And then over the years, they started expanding their borders, taking up smaller coastal cities and towns native to the region. Until slowly, they became one large nation. Uh, let's see what other information about this country. There were some conflicts surrounding the other nations. A lot of internal con like dissent uh, that were mostly put to an end by the Dal Nice. But one of them is known as the Workers' Rebellion, which is when... The f it's the first rebellion, sort of first and last rebellion, where uh, the people started rebelling against their feudalistic like serfdom, and they felt that these wage like nobody liked high wages, but also high taxes. It's like low wages, high taxes. We deserve more pay, and the rich should pay more on their taxes. Totally not in any way related to the things that are happening now in this world. Totally not. <laughs> totally. People deserve to be paid more, and the rich need to pay more taxes. Never heard of that. Um, money started getting consolidated into the royal family itself, with the King Vega star at the time hoarding tax money into the royal coffers and refusing to like share it with people or use it on their on um, its on food or anything like that. Some nobles were like, "Hey, let's make sure people are paid fairly," but most were like, "Yes, I will also keep hoarding money, but taxing you, but also not paying you." And I'm just not going to pay you at all or return your income or share the harvest that happens during the off months. A lot of noble homes burn, home, the noble homes burned to the ground. And a lot of them were even driven out of the country to Oscana, which is the northern country, one of the richest countries in the world, which is also why you'll note that there are a lot of just rich people that live in that country who were previously nobles of another land but are finally like oh i have to live in another country because i was you know ran out but the thing that brought the end to the rebellion and an end to kind of feudalism as a whole was the public beheading of the king by um they're known as the silver knight but they were also part of the dull nice known as Jeffrey Hemart, and he, uh, if you remember the name of the tournament in Lifswan was known as the Blaze Guard Tournament, he, the uh, king was beheaded with a sword known as the Blaze Guard. Uh, and then after that, he was beheaded, his daughter was made queen, and she said, okay, well, no more feudalism, and also maybe we will give money to the people. Um, because I'm 16, I just watched my dad get beheaded, so let's uh, fix this. And the only other issue was there is a country known as Corsair, which is the pirate I like pirates. They all live there, also known as the Storm Islands. Used to be part of Merwin, but is now its own country because of, you know, just sort of internal rebellions of saying, hey, we are super far away. We deserve to be our own country. You're not helping us with imports. You're really not even letting us trade with countries that we want to trade with, but we need to trade with them because we need food. So, like, I get it, you're at war with Mbizi and the Demon Kingdom, but also, like, we need to eat, and you're so far away, and they're so close. Uh, and it sort of, like, started as just, like, a trade issue until some merchant vessels and navy vessels were shot down, and, th and then it slowly just sort of became a fight. This is also where a lot of the uh, storm sorcerers come from known as weather mages, um, because it's very useful to have a storm sorcerer when you're uh, sailing an island nation. It's sort of really useful, but over time it just became sort of the issue of, okay, now they're their own country. Technically speaking, they're their own country, however Merwin refuses to acknowledge that and kind of goes, nope, that's still ours, but part of the nation. Boop, 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 boop. They also have uh, islands that they used to own, but sank over the years and became part of the... By the way, there is a merfolk empire underground, as well as some underwater cobalt locations. That um, people have never been to and never heard of. What's that? An underwater cobalt town? Never heard of it. Never heard of it. Didn't exist. Not real. We never went there. 
Mm -hmm. Fake. But yeah, so that's some of the history of Merwin and its location. Uh, and sort of like its own history. Uh, hmm. That's really all I've got for Merwin. There's more that's going to be written up over time, but for now, yeah, that's all I've got. Uh, I could go into hmm, either the history of, I guess, Mbizi or some of my custom races and how they're built and their history. Where is it? Mm -hmm. What would you prefer going over first? Where are my notes? Uh, I guess I will go over some of my custom races. Huh? I keep... I, there we go. I always lose my notes. So as you can see, here is the city of Osen. That's Osen. But let's see. Let's go to D&D Beyond and check out some custom races. Oh. Oh dear. It's terrifying. That the D and D beyond the dind, the dind bed, the dind bed dind. Ah, uh, but yes. So here are a couple of my custom races. Let's see. Look, let's check out. Let's check out the dwarves. So they're mostly the same as regular dwarves, except uh, I do have some different uh, differences. Let's see. Now, so I'm pulling up some other notes I have. My Andorian dwarves are... Actually, do I have notes here? Dashboard. You'll see the secrets of Andoria. All of its secrets. Stat blocks, I believe I put it under stat. Yep, here we are. I also have them here uh, in my world, but the dwarves are mostly the same. However, there are uh, three different sub races. So there are the Mesa and the Sierra dwarves, which are a bit similar to the hill and I believe s mountain dwarves. I don't remember. And then one custom, specifically custom one known as the Orate, which is about, like, dwarves and their greed can lead to some, uh, t uh, they can sort of become one. So you can either be born an Orate or become one, which is when your heart fills with too much greed, you start feeling the physical effects of it. With, like, bright gold light, they have a sort of insatiable greed where they can sense the presence of gold within a thousand feet of themselves and determine which location has the greatest amount of gold. See where it's being moved, which direction the movement is. Uh, and they also have an ability called Rapacity, which gives them Mage Hand, Hellish Rebuke, and Incite Greed. Uh, and that's mainly it for my dwarves. This is their sort of... It's a fairy tale slash horror story for... Did you, you tell young dwarves, like, hey, if you get too greedy, you will become this creature that can feel an insatiable sort of greed... And you won't be able to control yourself. Ooh. Which I thought was just like a fun little thing to add in there. And then let's see. What I got? The elves. Did it? Elves are also similar. However, there are three new types of elves that are created that are specifically about the light itself. Um... Elves are fey adjacent in my world, so the fey, from the fey wild, they sort of move, a um, couple of them moved over to the sort of quote-unquote mortal realm and live here in what is known as Lahey, which is the elven slash fey nation. A lot of fey have their sort of caste system of like pure blood versus lower blood fey. Um, some fey are based around animals, while as others are based around insects. Uh, most of the quote-unquote lowborn are based around insects instead of animals themselves. But there are also those based around light, which is usually some of the sort of higher-born elves. So like daylight elves, 
uh, also known as gold, there's like uh, sort of related to the sun. They have the cantrips, extra language, and elven weapon training. Moonlight elves, same thing, but also instead of closer to the sun, closer to the moon itself, also known as silver or moonrise elves, they get the blessings of the moon, which gives them the light cantrip and sleep. And then twilight elves, which are supposed to be the elves of the in-between, between light and dark. Uh, I do need to update the sun elves just because it feels like they're lacking. Where the others have like dark vision, extra senses, and spells. Sunlight elves are like, you get one cantrip and you can read an extra language. <laughs> so I gotta update that. But um, alrighty, let's see what else. I believe there's it. Elves. Huh. Ah, and then my one other custom race. My Jotuns, which are like giants or goliaths, except a little different. Where is it? And here's Jeff. Here's Jeff and his little stats. You can't see them. <gasps> Jeff. Jeff, you missed it. He was on the previous page. His like custom stat block oh. is, is saved here. And then my Jotuns, which are a completely custom race. Um... With who are, they are from the giant realm, they are sort of the race that is closest to giants. So the giants are sort of from a freezing, cold realm, uh, and then as they s spread their way out into the mortal realm, they sort of became less and less giant-like and less and less frozen. But the Jotuns are the closest to that race. Blue skin, skin hard like ice. Many see them as monstrous with like hulking forms. They've got horns, sharp tusks claws, um, sort of natural markings on them. However, they're very, um, like a calm race. They're pr practitioners of protective mind magic. Uh, they're strong in both body and mind. They get, you know, the same things as giants. Natural athletes, stones endurance, powerful build. Uh, and then where, uh, you can't see it on here. But I believe they have their variant traits known as the Sin Mark, which is a sort of cultural uh, ability that they have that is relative only to the Jotuns. Now, other people can get it, but it's not the same. Uh, it is a cultural practice they do with the, a creature known as the Viet Mark, which is a mind worm that sort of burrows into your brain and is usually there as like a psychic sort of monster that eats away at you and like does psychic damage. However, they have a method that they do where they sort of symbiotically join forces with it and the it lives inside your head and protects you from any kind of psychic damage. Uh, so like Jotun culture have used this practice for centuries, yeah. making a sort of lifelong symbiotic relationship. It's not a practice easily shared with outsiders because of how like deeply cultural it is, but it is a staple of Jotun culture to when you are of age see if you are compatible with one of these creatures and if you can bond with it you would be uh what were the abilities it gave you uh complete resistance to psychic damage advantage to all saving throws against being charmed magic can't put you to sleep you immediately speak telepathy um you can cast attack thoughts at will um I believe there was more that I haven't added in yet. Do, 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 do. But yes, it is. So this is one of the like major touchstones of Jotun culture to join yourself with this sort of mind worm and in doing so give yourself the ability to resist psychic damage, speak telepathically, and keep your mind safe from outside intrusion. Uh, now, other people can get it. If you're not Jotun, you can get this, but it would give you lessened abilities. Uh, what were they? I believe you can only get resistance to psychic damage, and that's it. Wow. But if you're but if you're Jotun and you get it, you have all of the other abilities, such as the you know detect thoughts, magic, all of that, mm -hmm. which. I enjoyed writing up. Uh, I have a lot more for the culture of the Northern Lang uh, area, just because 
I just had more time to write on it. But the northern nation is also like that's where that's where the Jotun race is sort of not native but most common. Exactly, you get a free brain friend. Um, now, oh, cool. if you're not compatible, it might start eating away at the back of your brain, and you might maybe remember from a different game we did where there were creatures eating away at people's brains. You, they might have a name now and what they look like. And it's if you are not compatible, they definitely will mess up your brain and maybe eat the whole thing. Oh, boy. Uh, so Not a fun time. You, if you're Yoden, this is a very fair thing to take, uh, stressor to take, but, like, if you're not, let's not, let's not risk it on the brain worm about to eat out the insides of my head. But, yep, so this is the northern nation. They're a very chill. Also, it's one of my favorite nations because they have one of my favorite thing. They, they live in a gift economy, which purely exists on the, they don't have a concept of money. Like, they have money because they have to trade with other countries, but if you, like, live in a city, there is no money. If you need something, go get it. Someone who has extra will share it with you. There's usually communal huts that are just like, yeah, well, I made, like, 30 uh, things of jerky, so anybody who wants some can just go get it. Uh, a lot of people from Fenfear who come to other countries end up getting arrested for stealing. Because they kind of just walk into markets and assume that this is where people can take things and go, yeah, okay, well, I needed some bread, so I took the bread. Oh, we're not, you have to pay, what's paying? Um, but, yeah, so they live in a gift economy. There's sort of a, if you need something, go get it. If you can, help your neighbor. So, like, hey, do you know how to sew? Yeah, well, okay, can you help her with, like, making a dress for the thing? And then she'll give you food, and then if you need that, you can just go to the butcher, and they'll go get this for you which I think is just a really cool concept and can, can functionally work in a fantasy world where uh, no one would abuse this system. But yeah, so this is one of the, they live up north. They are well known for just being one of the most easygoing countries. Like, no, they have never had a war with anyone purely because everyone's like, why would you fight? What are you fighting over? Why would you do that? Not, like, outside of the fact that, objectively speaking, they are still titans and giants, and you will not win that fight. Why fight them? They're so nice. And for what? They also have a lot of natural protections, living in a very mountainous area. Like, how? What are you fighting? It's just mountains and forests. How are you going to get to them? They're so well defended unfortunately slash fortunately they also are near something called the serpent's landing which is where there are a lot of just like underwater massive serpents that live uh in the area so it's kind of hard to just get to them to fight like by sea you're not doing it and then by land how where where are you going how are you getting here so very chill nation um, let's see. They have very scarce farmland, so they don't have a lot of farmland, so instead it's a lot of, they're a very hunter-gatherer society. Uh, every year there is a, every spring there is something known as the Jack Saison, which is open hunting season to catch what is known as, like, the rarest game. A frost reindeer, which frost rain deer I had to look up. Um, but it is a special type of reindeer that they have in their region, that glows and sort of has like crystalline horns uh and the goal is not to kill it but to hunt it capture it show it off in town and then release it um there you usually it is a sacred creature you usually don't go uh, go around killing them it's more just to show off that you were able to capture something so graceful and so skittish uh let's see the country was founded by, I, the, I wrote these names down, I cannot pronounce them. I do not speak any Nordic languages. Hralder Harrigan, he was the first Jotnar, uh, Jotnar to settle here. They made a capital to build shelter. And like as time passed in the mortal plane, uh, they came here to escape what is known as the Blood Wars in the Giant Realm. Uh, and so as they just spent time here, one of the effects of sort of the mortal plane I have is that 
the longer you spin in the mortal plane, the calmer you get. Like, that's why a lot of, like, either demonic creatures or large, like, the longer you spend here, the more you start gaining free will, so to speak. So that's the planar effect. It's not, uh, obviously, an effect you would feel if you were born in this plane, but that's one of the planar effects of the, mor of the mortal plane is the more time you spend here, the more likely you are to experience, you know, free will, other emotions. You start experiencing the entire range of things. Literally, the power of friendship starts affecting you. And you start going, oh, I am. Um, you could do anything you want. But this country is sort of surrounded by like a storming ocean, mountain ranges, forests, all those kinds of things. Uh, so the first things they did was open up trade with Oskana, the, ne the next nation right near them. Like, hey, can we trade with you for food? And in return, we will offer protection or whatever it is you need from us. Uh, and it's functionally just a nation of peace. Uh, let's see. It is currently ruled by, I believe I have a picture of her, Queen Shremir, fourth of her name. She's very cool. She wears a coat entirely made of living uh, mink. It is literally, uh, all of those are alive and they just sort of crawl over her. Which is, I just find that a very fun concept. I love that so much. Which is like, yes, this is my fur coat. Oh my god, you killed all of them? She's like, what? No, they're all alive. They're all tiny. Like, she f half of them just like turn and look at you like, what the fuck did like, you Like, no, of alive? course not. And she's like, yeah, these are my babies. I feed them constantly. Because, of course she would. They're, they're tiny and adorable. Uh, but under her rule, peace has continued extending. She's ruled for about 80 years now. She looks amazing for her age. Um, this is one of the three nations. Uh, so, like, one of the few kingdoms born out of people from this plane. Like, not from this plane. So their traditions aren't commonly shared with their neighboring nations. But they're very generous. They spread a lot of peace. They spread a lot of, like, food values, cultural changes. Uh, they're still connected by... They're the only country, uh, country still touching the Onding. So that sort of northern barrier that keeps them away from the giant realm. They're one of the only few who can, like, physically go through and stop it. Because that is their own heritage. I also mentioned, again, the the uh, Vitmark, which is the name of the worm. And then the practice of joining yourself when it, with it is known as the sin mark. Um, let's see. Ba -ba -ba -da. They are... Where is it? Again, same with the, the worm in your brain. Uh, they are also well known for their oral tradition. Uh, so this country is a, they still, you should, while there is some written history and a lot more are writing the history down now, just like as time passes, people want to keep track of it. It is well known for their oral traditions. Ah, ba, 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 da. So instead of writing it, some have taken to making visual tapestries to pass that history down that like might get lost over time because people are just, you know, as, like, times change, people get older, some traditions sort of fall out of style. Um, people have taken to making visual tapestries to continue on their oral tradition. Uh, this is also where you will note there is a specific job known as an ord, which is a traveling wordsmith. It is a bard, type of bard at least. I haven't finished making that subclass yet, but I want to make one that is specifically for uh, the traveling bard. So your, your job would be to travel the world, gather stories, and then bring them back to your home to sort of be a traveling wordsmith with ballads and folk tales and things like that as a oral tradition. Which, as things are oral tradition, that obviously means the music becomes more and more integrated into the culture. Uh, so, a lot of this was also based on Sami culture. So, song chanting, um, which I did grab a song that is in the public domain by Ian Grimm. I will not play it, but it is available. It's known as The Wolf. If you want to take a listen, it's amazing. Honestly, take a listen to all of their music. It's I so good. This song is um, written by the Ord Guri Holvand, dedicated to the myth I've created called 
Olven Rain City, which is just Santa, but I wanted a Santa myth. Um, but also, it's like it's not just Santa. Uh, Olven Rain City is a story of a traveler who crosses in between the Onding every midwinter to bring information and stories to the Titans and then back. And it she hur- they hurry the sun along the journey, which is why the days get shorter and shorter, is because they wish to return home. So they have been trying to push the sun into the journey so that the moon can start shining. And at the end of midwinter, they return with new stories and new information to light the sky with new colors, which is where the northern lights sort of come in. That's so cool. Um, it is also sort of mimicked by people taking a uh, sort of pilgrimage to your family home. So wherever it is you were born or come from, you take every midwinter to your family home to sort of copy that same pilgrimage. And then you, you know, spend time with your family, share stories, all that fun little stuff. And then, ah, ba, 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 da. that is part of the, like, ah, you can also read more on my world anvil, because I wrote it all here, and it's probably much cleaner than what I'm saying, because I really tried to make it neat. So cool. Uh, let's see. It was settled by titans who were fleeing from the blood wars, um, and they sort of stuck to the mountains and caves until they felt that that grip of war was over, which is also why there are a lot of underground cities here as well. Just sort of trying to find safety in the world that they have like just become introduced to. Uh, it wasn't until I believe the third uh, in line, Leave Her- uh, Harrigan, started expanding the territories and establishing an actual nation and drew up a border a border contract with the neighboring country. And then once they drew up their border contract, then they were capable of creating their own home and country. Ah, They had things which I haven't fleshed out entirely, but notice supply cities, which are cities that were just filled with food, stores, lumber, precious metal, treasures, anything people could need, you could go to one of their food stores or one of the supply cities and go get that um, product. So like, uh, are you from a neighboring town that just needs more wood? Go ahead, go there, get it. Are you from a town that has a huge amount of wood and don't need it anymore? Go ahead and drop it off. Uh, so that they could have cities that were sort of built into the concept of, sh- they're really big on the concept of like sharing and make sure that every person has enough to be safe and to be like well cared for. Uh, one of the worst events in their history is known as the Lunar Contagion. Uh, it was a plague, the, uh, the, a, a sort of moon plague that sort of that brought the city to its knees. And it was also known as the age of the moon poison. And it was an issue where people were sort of getting sickened by moonlight uh, as like large worshipers of the sun and the moon and so the cycle that passes through, getting sickened by the moon and having the moon cause illness. I believe, did I fully flesh it out here in its own page? No, I did not. Um having the moon here and having it sort of add to the illness made it really hard for people to like continue on with their traditions it is also where where is it Hmm. the tradition known as bah yeah there it is toss uh mender which is where you pour clean spring water over your shadow for summer solstice to sort of add to protection and um, keeping you from becoming like a larger target of that moon illness. Uh, does it work? Does it not? Kind of unclear, but you know how like traditions sort of just become something that you do regardless of if it does or doesn't work or not. Same with the, some of the more superstitious people will, same as like throwing salt over your shoulder. Um, a lot of superstitious people will still continue with that of like, hey, if you come into my house, pour this on your shadow. Whereas others are like, ah, that's an old thing that we don't need to do anymore. And then, yeah, currently it is eighth in line, Queen Hermer. She is, she became queen when she was 17 years old um, and has spent her entire reign under peace and has not, uh, has not had conflict since. She's a nothing but uh, keep her people happy. And there's been, you know, her age is known as uh, the Golden Age. And it's believed that she's going to bring about um, even a treaty between 
Uh, where is it? Zelmar, which is known as the Demonic Nation. Uh, they're not actually demons. I mean, I, I, demons are devils. I can't remember which one is lawful. I always forget. But it is one of those. Uh, and they sort of have a bad reputation as one of the demonic slash devilish nations. And what was the name of it? Uh, Zelmar. Okay. X. Where is it? X E L M A R. I right. don't believe I finished up their page, but I might have. Oh, it's just not here. It might not be public. Yeah, I don't think it's public. It is a tiny private page for me. You cannot look. I also might not have made the page, if I'm being entirely honest. Let's, uh, let's check. Yep, it's private. As you can see, there are some things. But yeah, I haven't made their article yet. There's also, you know, the historical figures of my world that we haven't gotten a chance to see. Ah, uh, the Blood Wars, which I haven't had a chance to fill out. Don't look at this. All the deities and divinations. That part I definitely haven't filled out because it is in my physical notebook somewhere. That is so cool. But yeah, you can see. I'm tr uh, hopefully once this is all done, it will be all... It will be nice and neat. There's also the two custom creatures. And then this part you can't see. The campaign notes live down here. Secrets. And then this is my loose information where I'm like, I just... Uh, like, the, these people have to go on a family tree, but they don't need their own page. So, like... <laughs> well, because I have to fill out the family tree, and I'm like, it doesn't matter. This is her husband, this is the child. It's too many people. They don't need their own pages. They're just <laughs> there to fill out my family tree. But, yeah. So, these are some... Also, I need to change this. It's no longer northern Andoria. It's just all of Andoria. Okay. Well, it's some things. But yeah, so as you can see, here's the demonic nation. We can all spooky in the corner. They also have dragons. Because why not? One tiny question. Mm -hmm. Is that where the dragon came from that we got for lifts? Perhaps. I mean, notice this flowing river of, of lava. Yeah. You might have gone to the demonic nation. You're technically speaking... Mm -hmm. The school, the country you're in, is at war with. They're... Oh. They're sort of like... War. <laughs> war. It's a cold war. Cold war. Mm -hmm. Where it's like, we hate each other, but we're not going to actually fight. Okay. But uh, I hate you, and then I hate you. And da -da -da. There's I also hate your the... guts. No, I hate your guts. Fuck you. Mm -hmm. There's also the elven nation here, which is sort of split in half. So half of it is where the elves and the sort of uh, rest of the elf lives. The rest are where the shifters and changelings all live. Because um, since Fae are very rules-oriented, the treaty they made thousands of years ago is sort of still in place. Because they don't know that the leader they made the treaty with passed away because of, you know, normal lifespans. Whereas Fae are sort of immortal. And so it's kind of just become a game of do not let them know that our leader is dead because we cannot redo this treaty. Oh. We don't want to we don't want to have to do this again. But um So the elves sort of keep to the the east and the shifters to the west. Um where the shifters are are nomadic people in the east the uh Elves sort of have a controlled constant spring because the Fae are so very lawful and don't like changes. They have kept it where s the seasons themselves don't even change. Which is a little, a little, a little boring, a little annoying, but you know. Ta-da, you live with it. I believe that's m that's most of my like well, at least world building notes. So cool. Uh, there will obviously be more added as I get the chance. It's not including this totally cool floating island. Uh, that's yeah, above a whirlpool. I was say. This is totally cool, normal place, 
floating island above a whirlpool. It's known as uh, Oyulo. It is where the tabaxi and the aracocra are both native. There is a tiny, just like, sort of civil war slash hatred, because cats and birds yeah. hate each other. Cats like being high up, birds like flying. Fair enough. But yeah, that is their uh, native nation. They don't spend a lot of time interacting with others. Mm-hmm. Because one, it's physically hard to get down. And two, because uh, other oh. countries are boring and for nerds. <laughs> is it, you think there's a better group of people than the cat people? Eh, no. The cats and the birds just look at their place like, shit. Mm-hmm. They look at other places and go, worse shit, we're staying here. Exactly. There is obviously not pictured on this map. The Reverie Center, which is the airship that sort of flies over every country to avoid having to pay taxes to any one country. Fair. If you if you go to every country, you don't have to pay taxes to any of them. It's like, that's not how that works, but, you know. Not how that works, but no one's argued with them yet. I mean, are you going to fight this man? That's not worth it. Uh, so a uh, very elderly wizard. It's always wizards who oh. keep trying to break the rules. Uh, doesn't want to pay taxes. So he created a, a skyship. Was like, well, while I'm here, I do want like, I don't want to have to keep going down to go get things. I'm tired of having to leave my airship just to go get stuff. And so, slowly it expanded further and further until it became a mall. And now there's just a mall in the sky. Uh, it's mostly where adventurers go because while normal people think it's insane and weird, adventurers kind of just get on the yeah that tracks. That makes sense. If you're an adventurer, you're like, okay, that makes sense. I can go get my stuff there. But yeah, I believe those are most of my notes for my world building. I love this. That is so cool. Thank you so much for sharing your world with us. Woo! Um. Okay, what else should I ramble about for an extended amount of time? Uh, well, first of all, let me... You, can I put the link of to the world anvil? Yeah, go ahead, drop that in the chat. Yeah. Boom. Please take a look. Go check it out. Comment. Tell me what's wrong. Tell me what's good. What works. What doesn't. The cool stuff. Uh, this map will get updated. I have a newer map somewhere. Hang on, let me see if I still have it. Uh, let me see if I can pull up the map real quick. Give me one second. It is somewhere on my computer. I have a lot of folders named Andoria for some reason. Uh, also, each country has its own logo. Uh, I'm trying to work on my art, not logo, crest. Uh, which, oh, here, I'll pull that up while I look for the maps. Dude, Corsair's crest. Uh, Fen Fears, which we saw. Lahey, the Elven Nation. Uh, the country you're currently in, the Dwarven Nation. Himbizi. Merwins. Uh, Oskana, the Wealthy Nation. Cat slash Bird Nation. Oyulo. The Demonic Nation. Selmer. And I believe that is all of them. That was it. That was enough time to stall for opening up map. <laughs> Load. One of these. Maps. There we go. Here's the map. I'm the map. I'm the map. I'm the map. Uh, I love uh as asgar's map generator because it's great and also because it helps me with my world building but bye bye uh a world map it needs to be updated because right now it's kind of stuck in this small size but you can see things like uh a mining town uh let's see pull this up 
and toggle on all the layers. Height map. So you can see each country, their capital, their cultures. If I sort by provinces, da 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 da. And then all of the provinces and the population in the province and how big the province is. What's their diplomacy like? Who's at war with who? So you can see that. Ah, uh, let's see. Let me find something interesting. Zones. Nah. Uh, sort by religion. Sort by their emblems. Also, this is where I make those emblems. Military units. Ah, da, 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 da. All of the cities, which ugh, there's so many. Here's all of the cities in this world. So many. Rats, rivers, cultures, limbs, military, and then my favorite ability, which is zoom in. Find a city, click on it. Here's its name type. Is it is it a capital? Does it have a port? Does it have a castle? Does it have walls? Trade center? Religious center? Shantytown? And then the best part. Where is it? Map. It creates a map for you. And you can just come here. It makes a full map. Ah, uh, but yes, yeah, so this is the, uh, I'm going to be updating it. Here with the map, as you can see, here's Corsair. So this will slowly get updated over time. But alrighty, that is that's all I've got from my world and my oh. world building. Thanks for joining. That's so cool. Also, I, I didn't realize. I love hearing about people's worlds. I didn't realize your camera is again green. I am green. I am Shrek. You are actually just Shrek. But alrighty. <laughs> if that is all, we've been we've only been live for an hour and forty minutes. Yeah. Well, sometimes. It, sometimes you take that. It's a little bit of a shorter stream, but it's one to just kind of explain the world that we will hopefully be coming back to. Yes. Are we going to be coming back to it next week or the week after? We will be coming back soon. Unclear soon. when. Something we will talk about in a production meeting. <laughs> yes. Now, uh, next up, the Five Nights of Freddy's timeline. Oh. Uh, I think we should turn off stream before that one. <laughs> exactly. That's got to go. Listen, that's an <laughs> off stream conversation. Because, listen, I don't know what y'all have been seeing, if y'all have been seeing what I've been seeing on TikTok. Oh, boy. People, you know, okay, that's, this is an off stream conversation. Yeah. Anywho, thanks for joining <laughs> us. I hope you, I hope you had a great time. I thanks hope you for joining us in Sid talks about their awesome world and I give vague noises because I don't I don't know how to contribute but I am very much enjoying the conversation. Yes, I I'm just here to ramble. Just here to I say useless it's information. Not useless. It's useless. incredible. Alrighty. But we will see you all soon for yeah, another I have a final question to leave off with. <gasps> oh. So who's the big baddie? Uh, the big baddie is the choices people make when they are emotionally hurt and oh. don't know what they're doing, but make decisions in fits of anger. That's the, that's the big bad. I don't know. Oh, I wasn't expecting an act. Oh, no. Listen, I love writing worlds that have perhaps not villains, but people who make choices and decisions, and it is up to the people Mary to Mary. decide. How you feel about that? Some people made decisions out of fits of anger and made bad choices. And uh, let's well, we find out what happens. Admit, we must all admit the true villain behind everything. Capitalism. Weimer.
Weimar. Weimar's to blame for everything, even the shit before he was born. Mm -hmm. Not even the capitalism? No. You don't think Lifeway has anything to do with the bads in this world? Well... Okay. The two things that we're always <laughs> gonna blame in this world. Weimar and Lifeway. Yes, I will also say there's not a single Lifeway in uh, Finfear, in that northern nation. There is not a one. They do not like the company. They're like, ah, mm, we're not including this shit in here. Good. Thank you. Disgusting. But alrighty, so that's where we'll leave you. And we hope you all have a great night. Have a great night, you guys. Thank you so much for joining us. Bye-bye. Goodbye. Boop.